for the weekend. And now with the warm weather, I know there are always projects inside and out that I have to get to. So today we're going to inspire you to tackle some of those outdoor projects with our Reno girls. It's been too long. Please welcome Leanna Lair Perot. <laughs> We love working together. Yes. <laughs> and believe it or not, they did not text each other last night, but they're perfectly coordinated. Like oh. a little bit of animal, a little bit of denim, a little bit of black. I love it. So you worked very hard on your exteriors, and I could sort of match the exterior with the designer um, because I know you all so well. But they're all very different. So let's start, Leanne, with your exterior. Yes. It's beautiful. You got a punch of color, and of course that nod to animal print. <laughs> Can yes. you tell? You can't, you can't be able to tell which one's mine. I really wanted to show off my personality yes. with this space and to hopefully encourage people to think about their homes as an extension not only of their inside but of their personality as well. Yes. It's putting your face forward to the street about mm -hmm. who lives behind those doors and speaking of the door this happens to be my favorite color, it's a beautiful, beautiful coral. It's my happy hue. And it's funny when I talk to people and I ask them if they have that color in their house, their happy hue, most of the time they say no. <laughs> so really? why not? <laughs> yeah. Not only put it inside your house, but have it that statement piece yes. on the exterior. Absolutely. Now, my facade is actually stucco. Mm -hmm. And there's a point with this that where I've kept the stucco very neutral. You don't have the option with stucco to have a lot of color and texture and brick or siding. Yeah. But you also don't want to go too crazy with paint and be that purple house on the street <laughs> yeah. and paint everything flat. So with the stucco, it's a really neutral, nice color. But the key here is accentuating then your architectural features like the window frame and even the door. And I want to point out, I've actually added a back band onto the traditional door oh, frame okay. to beef it up with a header. So to make that focal point of that front door really pop, not mm -hmm. only does color work, but beefing out the trim around as well is a really inexpensive weekend project yes. that makes a huge dramatic difference. You can take a stock big box door and make it look like a million bucks with the right trim. The bigger and more grand that door is, it makes such a statement. Absolutely. It really does. So what a great way to do it. And I just want to point out my rug. DIY. Because this is a DIY. I picked so up the sizal rug from Ikea and just used some leftover exterior paint to paint out my little Stenciling. leopard print. That's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it here. Good work. down yes. and see yes. this next beautiful exterior done by Danielle. Um, I mean, <laughs> I just love, I love, I love all of the green you're seeing. Let's talk about what you did um, with the with your exterior. What so, did you decide to use? Well, one of the biggest trends in colors right now for exteriors is black. Yes. And this material is actually charred wood. It's charred cedar and it blackens the wood. So it's a very natural cool. reaction. And yeah. you get all of that texture, it's very rich. And we're actually gonna show you how to do that here because yes. it's, a, it's an incredible <laughs> moisture resistant, insect resistant material. But which do I you just, just love. Do you, can you buy it like that? Can you buy lumber like that? Or you, do you there, have to do this? This is something that you've got to do yourself. There are some suppliers that are starting to do this in North America, yeah. but you can do it yourself. Okay. And yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get out that we're torch and show you. Apparently I'm gonna do it myself <laughs> later on in the show. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm like the opposite of Leanne in the sense that I kept everything sort of minimalist. So I didn't yeah. really make my door kind of disappears in because I wanted the charred cedar to really kind of pop. Yes. And I love the way greenery pops against mm. black. Yeah. Like it's such Me an too. amazing natural kind of combination. It's a lot of cottages and with, with exactly. black now out there. Exactly. The, the lake front. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is obviously like an urban setting, right? Yes. This is about how wide my house yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, all the sun that I get is on my front porch. So I really take oh, advantage nice. of that for container gardens. Yes. And in the summer, veggies and fresh herbs, like I just live for that. And yes. so, you know, you, these are gorgeous pots from Restoration Hardware. And these herbs, rosemary, it just gives it that kind of like so old so world right. charm. Yeah. Does it make yes. you want to cook? It does. Do you trust your herbs on your front porch? <laughs> <laughs> like, is this a draw for the creatures? Do, do they you hang out there? Are they waiting for you for when me, you leave for work? Out next door and sniffing a little. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your neighbors. You're gonna watch the neighbors. That's kind of cute though. These herbs are okay. They're very fragrant. I don't find that animals are drawn to that. But okay. if you're gonna go that extra sort of level and yes. do some um, some salad greens, the whole garden some veggies. There. You can. This is from Lee it. Valley. It's called a veggie pod. Okay. And this is intense. So it's it's got this incredible irrigation system. So this is a cover. Yeah. It's got a built-in irrigation system. You just hook your hose 
up too. Oh. This protects it from the critters okay. and, um, and from the sun as well because you want to get lots of sun but you don't want to burn them in the hot, hot heat. So it's Got incredible because it. there's a reservoir in the bottom of this. So this is something, I love that like urban garden thing. I like that you awesome. can have the whole thing, like your whole garden just contained on your front porch. Exactly. That's beautiful. Yeah. And then you've got that cover when you need it. Yeah. Okay, let's move down a little bit more because we've got this beautiful, light, bright exterior, which I knew uh, was Sharon's. Yeah, you did, did a good job. You yeah, I just, I know you're doing really well. So um, this is lovely um, as well in a different way. In a different way. I mean, I wanted to bring a bit of a West Coast vibe yeah. because I love the West Coast, but I don't live there. So I've got my traditional <laughs> urban brick. But I thought by bringing the lighter colors, um, sort of a contemporary feel, but also hits of black because we were talking, all of us use black. We yes. didn't plan it, although we, we knew about the chard. Yeah. So we figured. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we, the quickest thing you can do to add a modern feel to the front of your house is by painting out the windows right. black. So I wanted to show how you can actually do that, but still have a creamy colored trim. So mm -hmm. I painted out the brick with pashmina, went with a really pretty maritime white, so it's not so black and not white. Stark. So exactly. And I think what I love about the West Coast is that natural vibe with a lot of the architecture, and there's always black and white but there's always an element of wood and something that yes, really warms it up. Uh, so that. because I have my tiny little you know <laughs> downtown uh, facade I didn't put a lot of wood on the exterior but I thought bringing it into things like furniture yes. and my dream would be to have a porch that I could sit out. I go to my neighbor's house totally. all the time and sit on theirs <laughs> yes. but I would love to have one so this is a fantastic um, club chair from ARD Outdoor and the thing I love about how exterior furniture feels so comfortable and it feels very interior it does, now. It looks like a living room chair. Doesn't it? I like it. I would yes. absolutely put that in my house and then it's all about texture too when you have a natural color palette so wow. hits of black, hits of, um, hits of different texture in the rug even if you're covering up a concrete porch. Yes. A rug. Great thing to do. Softens it up immediately. Yeah. What's the color and of the door? This is Gloucester Sage. It's one of my favorite mm. greens. Warm. A lot of gray. Beautiful. Very very warm. So yeah. that's the vibe that I wanted was something very warm and cozy. Very nice. And you know you can come and sit on my porch anytime, right? <laughs> I have. <laughs> and you have. Many, many hours and many, many liters of wine. Yes. <laughs> anytime, honey. Summer's kind of coming. Coming up. Uh, well, Danielle decided it was time to tackle her exterior. So let's have a look at that. Well, we're always really good about encouraging the viewers to roll up their sleeves, get in there and tackle those weekend projects. And I've got a weekend project that I've been working on for about three years. <laughs> I need to prep and maintain and paint the wood on the front of my house. That's a big project. And because it's so big, <laughs> I've got Sharon here to help me out. Well, that's what friends are for. Yay! <laughs> I'd like to do a stain on the floor as opposed to a paint. Well, that's a really so. good idea. I think that'll look awesome. But whether it's solid stain or semi-transparent, the wood has to be completely dry. Right. So I usually bring out this handy-dandy moisture meter. We just stick Feels the probe. Damp. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Oh, and look at that. Definitely <laughs> too damp. Oh, darn. I was really hoping I'd be sanding today. I'm sure you were. Yeah, Maybe you'll find something else to do. <laughs> it's okay. I've got a lot of work to do because I want to do all of the trim in the entire house. You might as well do the whole facade, right? So including the aluminum, is that fine? Okay, no, that's fine. The only thing with paint is you want to make sure that it's a good five degrees consistently. When you're using Aura, five degrees is perfect through the night. Like through all the through the night, so not all a high of night. five. No, uh, okay. see, I think you probably have to wait another week or so. We'll okay. see how the weather goes. But in the meantime, I think you've got lots of sanding I've to do to get this deck too. prepped. <laughs> Sharon was right. <laughs> there is a lot of sanding. And I actually started off using much more primitive methods. And then I eventually went to a palm sander and decided finally to go ahead and rent this, which is great because you can see it's beautifully taking the wood right down to that bare color. And that's what I want to do because I'm going to actually use this translucent stain, which is a lot more natural and the maintenance is going to be a lot less. For the painted areas, I'm lucky. I don't need to take it right down to the bare wood. It's a little bit easier. I'm just going to release all of these sort of like loose paint flakes and rough it up a bit because I'm using an opaque stain. So I'm lucky. <laughs> Before. We have to 
to talk a little bit about the, the, the right temperature because we've all been talking about how, you know, it's been very inclement and mm -hmm. I, I don't want to plant flowers until I know <laughs> exactly. there's going to be no snow and no frost warnings. <laughs> and true. also, it's got to be dry. Yeah. Yeah. So that's critical. How do we know, Sharon, how can we gauge that the, you know, the wood is dry enough that we can start doing all of our projects and our staining yeah, and painting? Well, you want to make sure that the weather is, it, for painting, staining, at least five degrees. And that means consistently over the evening mm -hmm. as well. So right. over the, overnight. overnight. But the water is really paint and stains worst enemies. So um, I honestly, I've had this little moisture meter for around 10 years. There's much more cool digital ones that you can get <laughs> yeah. now. But I still carry this around. And Danielle and I yep. hold that experimented. Up for us, Just hold that up and we'll get a shot of it. But how do you actually use that? Well, you want to make sure that the wood moisture content is, sorry the moisture content in the wood is less than 15 percent so you okay. basically just use a simple yeah, probe it's like your meat you put the probe right probe. in the wood right? <laughs> yeah oh. exactly you put it in and it goes zing it goes if it goes into the red you know uh oh this not not ready it's how just wet. see <laughs> only and then, no you're ready. ready to the winter you're ready to stay <laughs> <laughs> okay. So critical. So get a moisture meter. Yes. Make sure the called? wood's dry before you sand it. And yes. Danielle is now an expert and with this sander. Too. Oh, and, and concrete, concrete too. Oh, and concrete too. It concrete needs to be sure. dry. Yeah. Any of your really? exterior. Really? Yes. But you can't put a probe on the concrete. No, but you can let it sit pretty close to the concrete, yeah. and that okay. actually gives you a good enough rating. Right. Yeah. So. Okay, so yeah. then this big guy, because I felt bad for you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you started with what? The little sheets? Wow. Well, like, yeah. And then yeah. you had the little thing? I had my palm sander. It's really yeah. good. Like, it's taken me, like, you know, a long way. But at some point, Sharon was like, listen, you can rent this on-floor system from a Benjamin Moore dealer, which I did from Dixie That's Paint. That's amazing. And they, they literally, they came, they delivered it with this huge vacuum attached to it, so I didn't even make a huge mess. Oh, and good. this thing, like, it saved yeah. me days, you honestly. You like you were just vacuuming. Totally. It, it was, was so calm. Effortless. <laughs> and so it's fantastic because I had to get right down for the stain that I wanted to put it on it because yes. I had a dark stain first. And uh, yeah, I got friends awesome. in the right place. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You got the hookup. Well, I, now I need to see the final, yes. right? Very excited to see this. Let's see how it all turned out. I really love how my exterior is coming along. And I say coming because it is a work in process. It is still happening. We managed to get the main level done, but the rest of the house... What can I say? We didn't get to it because of the weather. Whenever you're working with an exterior project, you're at the mercy of weather. We did manage to get the deck stained, and I've used Ashland Slate. It's a semi-transparent, and I love it because it's, it's going to camouflage that wear and tear that I find that we get a lot of because we're an uncovered porch. And I took that gray and used it throughout for all of the railings, all of the trim. That's Benjamin Moore wrought iron. And I really wanted to crispen and tighten the color palette here because with old brick, you know, I have a lot of kind of character already. I wanted everything else to feel a little bit slicker. Except, of course, for the door, which I've done in gossamer blue. And I patinaed it. I did a bit of an art project here. And I really wanted to pull from the patinaed bronze on my door handle. And I think it just really makes me happy. It's such a spring-like color. It's like I'm willing the warm weather to happen. <laughs> and I've got my container plants out. It's kind of like taking all of the greenery from the garden, continuing it in. It softens this corner. And it's kind of more like this outdoor room where we can just sit and watch the world go by. nature doesn't work on our timeline, right? It's touch and go, especially in the spring. Yes, Absolutely. so you couldn't paint all of it. We're going to follow up. Uh, we're going to see when the whole exterior is complete. We are going to come back, uh, but we do love the new look. It's gorgeous. Yes. We're going to post the completed makeover on our website as well once the weather cooperates. We'll go back and shoot it. <laughs> Huge thank you to Sheridan Nurseries for all this amazing greenery, and we've got more of the Renault Girls coming up. We're going to <laughs>